Some in this council have offered protection to their allies who are oppressing occupied peoples in Palestine and in Kashmir. There was a remark of habitual nature by one delegation referring to union territories that are integral and inalienable part of my country. Under the UN Charter, states have the right of self-defense against attacks on their sovereignty and territorial integrity. Yet, a state which is in forcible occupation of a foreign territory cannot invoke the right to self-defense against those whose territory it has illegally occupied. I would treat these remarks with contempt they deserve and not dignify them with a response in the interest of time. Under international law, the struggle of peoples living under foreign occupation for self-determination and national liberation is legitimate and cannot be equated with terrorism. It is the suppression of this struggle which is illegal. Throughout history, colonial powers have portrayed national liberation movements as terrorism. Some in this council have offered protection to their allies who are oppressing occupied peoples in Palestine and in Kashmir. Under the UN Charter, states have the right of self-defense against attacks on their sovereignty and territorial integrity. Yet, a state which is in forcible occupation of a foreign territory cannot invoke the right to self-defense against those whose territory it has illegally occupied. Mr. President, the perpetuation of Israeli occupation will not bring peace to the Holy Land. Durable peace will emerge from the, in, the internationally agreed two-state solution and from the creation of a secure, viable, contiguous, and sovereign state of Palestine on the basis of the pre-June 1967 borders with Al-Quds al-Sharif as its capital. Before I end, there was a remark of habitual nature by one delegation referring to union territories that are integral and inalienable part of my country. I would treat these remarks with contempt they deserve and not dignify them with a response in the interest of time.